Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on compare and order rational numbers. Well, what are kinds of rational numbers? Well, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers written as a fraction in which the denominator is not zero. Basically, any number that you can write as a fraction, even if it's two over one, is a rational number. Now the Venn diagram below shows that the number two can be called many things. It's a whole number as we can see it's in the middle here with the whole number, but it's also an integer and a rational number. Compare that to negative 1.44444444444 down here, and that's only a rational number. It's not an integer and not a whole number. Common fractions, terminating and repeating decimals, percents, and integers are all rational numbers. So as we go to put these numbers in here, we have our number bag on the right side. And if we look at 0 0.8, well, 0 0.8 is not a whole number, and it's not an integer, so it's just going to be a rational number. 2.2, well, I can write that as a fraction, so that's going to be 2.2 with the 2 repeating. Negative 1 is an integer. 1 is a whole number. And 1 and 2 thirds is an example of a rational number. Now if we want to use the number line to compare negative 5 and 5 ninths and negative 5 and 1 ninths, our first step here is going to be to divide this line into ninths. Well, right now I have negative 5 and 0 ninths. And so I'm going to divide this into 1 ninth, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 ninths, 8 ninths. And it's not exact for sure. But I'm going to have negative 5 and 1 ninth close to the negative 5. And then I have negative 2 ninths, negative 3 ninths, negative 4 ninths, negative 5 ninths. So I have negative 5 and 5 ninths right there. And so there's negative 5 and 5 ninths. There's negative 5 and 1 ninth. And if I want to compare the two, well, 0 somewhere out here. If we were to continue this number line, 0 somewhere out there. And the further you are to the left away from 0, the smaller you are. So negative 5 and 5 ninths is going to be less than negative 5 and 1 ninth. Fill in the circle with less than, greater than, or equals to make a true sentence. Now one method we can use to compare these two numbers is to find common denominators. So if we rewrite our 5 sixths and our 7 ninths, if we can get a common denominator here, let's see, for sixths and ninths, we can get both those to thirty-sixths and six times six is thirty-six. So five times six is thirty. Nine times four is thirty-six, so seven times four is twenty-eight. And when I go to compare, 30 is greater than 28, 36. So 5 sixths is greater than 7 ninths. Now, for the next question, I'll use a slightly different method here. We have 1 fifths, and we're going to compare that to 7 fiftieths. Now, could we get a common denominator? Sure. There's also this other way called the butterfly method. Now, what we could do here is take our 1 times our 50, and that's on the left side as our 1 is on the left, so this is going to be on the left. And we're going to compare that to 7 times 5. Again, if you're asking what goes on the left side, what goes on the right side, Look for your numerator. Well, our left side simplifies to 50. Our right side simplifies to 35. And 50 is greater than 
35, so 1 fifth is greater than 7 fiftieths. Now, if you found common denominators for this one, you would have something along the lines of 1 fifth converting into fiftieths in order to compare to 7 fiftieths. And then you would multiply by 10 and 10 and get 10 fiftieths is greater than 7 fiftieths. So either way you want to work it, you'll get the same answer. Where it gets fun is with negative fractions. Now, if we have negative 9 sixteenths, and we want to compare that to negative 7 tenths, Notice how I attach the negative to the numerators. We can do that as we're comparing these fractions. Take the negatives from the sides and put these with the tops, with the numerators. When I go to use the butterfly method with this, nine, or negative nine times 10 is negative 90. And if I compare that to negative seven, times 16, negative 112. When I go to compare these two numbers, negative 90 is greater than negative 112. So negative 9 sixteenths is greater than negative 7 tenths. In the second period class, 37.5% of students like to bowl. In a fifth period class, 12 out of 29 students like to bowl. In which class does a greater fraction of the students like to bowl? Let's set this up with our second period at 37.5%. And our fifth period is 12 out of 29. Now, one thing I can do here in order to compare is to get both numbers as a decimal. Now, as it says in our little note here on the sign, to get this 37.5% into decimal form, we need to move our decimal point two spots to the left, which would be 0.375, and we remove the percentage sign. And as we've practiced, to get 12 29ths as a decimal. We can put the 12 on the inside along with a few zeros here, or 29 on the outside, and divide. Now 29 doesn't go into 1 and 29 doesn't go into 12, but 29 goes into 120 about 4 times. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 2 is 8 plus the one is 11. Subtract and you get four. Bring down your zero. 29 goes into 40 about one time. One times 29 is 29. Subtract and get 11. Bring down the zero and this goes in about three times. Three times nine is 27. Three times two is six plus two is Eight. And as you subtract this one out, you get 23. And I have enough information now. I have 0.375, and I can now compare that to 0.413. Well, as I compare these decimals now, I have 375 thousandths compared to 413 and some extra thousandths. Well, if I just compare 375 to 413, 375 is less than 413, and the same thing is true here. 375 thousandths is less than 413 thousandths. So if we can get them to the common place value, we can order these much more simply. So which class? like to bowl more? 
fifth period. Now to order the set 23 percent, 21 hundredths, one fourth, and one fifth from least to greatest, what we're going to do here is to get all of these numbers in to decimal form. And we'll use place value to order them. So if I write down vertically up and down our list here, if we want to get 23% into a decimal, right now the decimal points between the 3 and the percentage sign, slide that back 2 to the left, and this becomes 0 0.23. Well, our 0 0.21 is already in decimal form, which is kind of neat, so that's just 0 0.21. As for our 1 fourth, well, if you need to divide that to get it into a decimal, please do. This becomes 2 and a 5. So 1 fourth is 0 0.25. And our one-fifth, well, one-fifth, you could divide, or you could say, well, one-fifth is the same thing as two-tenths, if you multiply by two on top and bottom. And two-tenths is 0 0.2, two-tenths. Now, in order to line up our place value here, we're going to put this zero here in the hundredth spot. That way we can have everything lined up in the hundredth spot. We have our tenths and we have our hundredths. And now when we look to compare from least to greatest, let's look for the smallest. Well, they're all the same in the one. They're all zeros. We're all the same two, 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 two in the tenths. So now we're looking for the smallest number in our hundredth spot. And our smallest number in our hundredth spot is here, the zero. So this is going to be our least. So one-fifth is the least. Now when we look to continue on, what else is our next smallest? We have 0, which we did, a 1, a 3, and a 5. Well, our 1 is next, 0 0.21. So 0 0.21 is our next. That was our second one. Then we have to compare the 3 in the hundredths place and the 5. Well, 3 is smaller. So 23% is our third number which leaves us now with our greatest at one-fourth. So in order to compare and order multiple different types of rational numbers, if we get everything into a decimal point, everything lined up, we can then easily write these from least to greatest. That's it. Good luck.